Hi, welcome to an introduction for the Digital Commons at Malloy, our open access institutional repository. My name is Tabitha Octero. I am the Electronic Resources Librarian. I am also the administrator for both Digital Commons at Malloy and the Expert Gallery Suite. What is an open access institutional repository? Open access means the immediate availability and access to anyone with an internet connection worldwide. This means that the works do not hide behind a paywall, a subscription, or an affiliation to an institution like a college or university. Anyone who can get online can find, download, and access the content. Institutional repositories bring together all of a college's research under one umbrella with an aim to preserve and provide access to that research. So an open access institutional repository does both things. Digital Commons at Malloy collects all of the work or content of Malloy College and then places it out open access so anyone worldwide can access it. Digital Commons at Malloy was a library initiative to house Malloy created content, whether that content was created by a staff member, a student, or a faculty member. It was launched in January of 2017, and the following year we picked up the edition Expert Gallery Suite. There were several options in the market when the library began to look at creating an institutional repository. And we went with Digital Commons, which is a hosted solution from BPress. Since it is a hosted solution, there are many things that we do not have to worry about. There is unlimited storage. Any file type is supported, whether it is text-based or multimedia-based. Accessibility and security are also handled by the BPress team. And one of the biggest pluses is that BPress has a very good relationship with Google and Google Scholar. That relationship enables superior search engine optimization. And that is just one more thing that the library or our in-house IT team do not have to worry about. The goal for Digital Commons at Malloy is to be a perpetual living archive, a vehicle to share who we are, and what we do that distinguishes us from other institutions. What can be included? I do not say this lightly, but pretty much anything. Any type of Malloy created content can be placed in the Digital Commons. For published works, there is a difference between open access and traditional. For example, if you publish an article in an open access journal, that can be shared in Digital Commons based on the terms of the CC license that the journal chose. That also works for images, books, book chapters, presentations, multimedia, anything that was originally published open access can be included. The things that were traditionally published, there's a few extra steps. So my response is normally, you can include it, but there will be limitations placed by the publisher. So you could include articles, book chapters, conference proceedings, maybe even a whole book, but the publisher will limit the sharing in some way. This happens most often with articles. Only 25% of publishers allow you to place the full text PDF version of an article in an open access environment. And this is something that I will cover with you if you decide to include your published works in Digital Commons. Unpublished, 
these are just a few examples of things that could be included or things that are currently included. White or gray literature, newsletters, presentations, PowerPoints, audio, video images, and 3D images. There are a few other content types that we could include but do not have yet. That includes conference information, annual events, workshops, and journals. This is a brief overview of the different versions. This is what I was talking about with the published work. So a publisher might say, well, you can't include the published PDF, but you can include the preprint. This chart is available on the Digital Commons LibGuide. The URL is at the bottom of the screen. This is something that I cover when I do your CV review, but it's also just good to look at and get familiar with the different terms. Let's take a look in Digital Commons at Malloy so you can see how it functions. You can get to Digital Commons from the library's website. We do have a Digital Commons button in the middle of the page. You could also just remember that the URL is digitalcommons.malloy.edu. This is the landing page. Up top where it says Browse Scholarship, these are our highlighted collections. The Barbara H. Hagen School of Nursing Historical Collection is an image gallery. And Theses and Dissertations is our most popular collection. It currently includes music therapy theses and the nursing dissertations. As you scroll down the page, you will see a readership map. This tells you that we have over 2,000 total papers. That's not quite accurate. We have over 2,000 items. So that could be papers or images or videos. It's a mixed bag of content types. And since our launch in January of 2017, we have had over 27,000 downloads. Scrolling down a little further, you can see this discipline wheel. I am going to come back to that in a second. Scrolling up, we do have a menu bar up here. At any time through your browsing, you can click home to return to this screen. There is an about page, an FAQ page. Selected works displays the profiles that belong to faculty members who have works in Digital Commons at Malloy. So it's a little different than the expert gallery. The expert gallery includes all of the profiles created for Malloy College. Selected works only includes the profiles of people who have works in Digital Commons. And then there's a My Account button. Going back home, there is a search box. You could enter search terms here, search in this repository, or search across all repositories. Digital Commons at Malloy is part of the Digital Commons network. You can browse by collections, disciplines, or authors. When I hit collections, you will see how Digital Commons at Malloy is organized. It is organized by department. For the departments that have a little plus minus guy, they have more than one content type. So in communications, there's a section for faculty works, there's a section for podcasts, and there's a section for student videos. That is why they get the big section of communications. Same thing with English, the library, nursing, anything that you just see faculty works and then the name of the department. That just means that is the only content type that is currently from that department. And once they add more content types, they will also get a little folder. Once they get a folder, it gives them a landing page and some options for customization. Going into English, you can see that the English collections are listed. There is a blurb up here about the English department. And on the lower left-hand sidebar, you can see that the Twitter feed from at Malloy English has been embedded into this page. Those are just a few of the options for customizing a landing page for a department. Going back home, I will go back down to the discipline wheel and view it larger. 
Right now, there are 209 disciplines in Digital Commons at Malloy. These start very broad, like social and behavioral sciences, and then narrow down to public relations and advertising, as an example. You can also visit the discipline wheel for the Digital Commons Network. Let's go there. I know I changed sites because now the URL says network.bpress.com. Also in the middle of the page it says explore over 3 million works from 597 institutions. Malloy College is one of those institutions. There is a search box up here for the user to search, but most from this page will browse. Let's look for music therapy. I will click on Arts and Humanities. My discipline options will change. So now I will look for music. Options will change again because I'm narrowing down to a more specific topic. And music therapy will be this tiny little sliver right up here. This brings me to the music therapy commons. I can see the route I took to get here in this upper left corner. It says digital commons network, arts and humanities, music, music therapy. This lists 293 full text articles by 309 authors, over 61,000 downloads, and 70 institutions. Right here on the right hand side, you can see that Malloy College as, is listed as one of the popular institutions, and that is based on the downloads in July of 2019. If I click on this link that says 70 institutions, you will see a breakdown of the 293 works that are in the Music Therapy Commons by institution. And Malloy College is right here. We have the largest chunk of this pie chart with 63 works. And if I click there, I will be brought to Digital Commons at Malloy, looking specifically for music therapy, and this lists all of the music therapy works that we have. For every work in the Digital Commons, the work will get a cover page. So I will click on this one as an example. Here's an item record. Here's the number of downloads. Here's the abstract. This is the type of information that is included in a works record page. However, that is not how most users get to Digital Commons at Malloy. I know this because I can see the traffic when I come in from the back end with my administrator rights. I will show you how users are getting there. They are getting there from Google. So they go to Google, they type in whatever they're looking for, I typed in music therapy and supervision, and then they scroll. Maybe they stop here where it says scholarly articles and they'll go into Google Scholar. Maybe they'll scroll down a little bit more. And if they do, you can see right here on the first page of Google results, this one is from Digital Commons at Malloy. I know that because of the URL. It says digitalcommons.malloy.edu. If this looks good to them, they will click on the title and get brought directly to the theses. I can tell it's a thesis because it says right here that it's from our theses and dissertations collection and that it was earned as part of the requirements for music therapy. So this cover page is also on every single piece of work that is in Digital Commons at Malloy and it's to ensure that the users know where their work came from because they are usually coming from Google or Google Scholar. But that's great news because it means they don't have to go to digitalcommons.malloy.edu. They don't have to go to malloy.edu. They don't have to go to the library's webpage. Given the relationship between Digital Commons and Google and Google Scholar, that search engine optimization kicks in and they are able to find what they're looking for without having to go anywhere specific to Malloy College. You may take some time and browse Digital Commons at Malloy on your own. You can always go to the larger network at network.bpress.com. I do have a LibGuide specifically for Digital Commons and Expert Gallery Suite. If at any point in the future you would like to include your work as a faculty member or 
there is some student work that you would like to include, please feel free to contact me at tioctera at malloy.edu. This concludes an introduction to Digital Commons at Malloy. Thank you.